Adoniram Judson was born on August 9, 1788, to Abigail and Adoniram Judson, a congregational minister in Woodbury, Connecticut. He was described as a precocious child, and his mother taught him to read at the age of three while his father was on a trip. Adoniram was raised in a very religious household, but he began to question the idea of a loving God while he was still a boy. Adoniram's father had given a sermon in which he had said that even small children had to profess faith in God in order to go to heaven. But shortly after this, his six-month-old baby sister Mary died. Adoniram decided he wanted nothing to do with a God who would send a baby to hell. At age 16, he enrolled in Rhode Island College. It was here he met Jacob Eames, a deist and skeptic. Many of his friends in 1806 were also deists who believed God existed, but had no interest in the affairs of men. Their ideas had great influence on Adoniram's life, and he soon considered himself an avowed deist. After graduation, he returned to Massachusetts, where he opened the Plymouth Independent Independent Academy and published two textbooks, Elements of English Grammar and Young Ladies Arithmetic. A year later, though, to the cries and prayers and pleading of his mother and arguments of his father, he proclaimed his deist belief, closed the school, and headed to New York, where he joined an acting troupe. There he lived a wild and reckless life running up bills and swindling people out of money. While traveling, he came to an inn where there was only a single bed left in a room with a curtain acting as a divider. On the other side of that curtain, the innkeeper told him, was a man who was not expected to live the night. Judson assured the innkeeper this would not bother him in the least. However, during the night, as he heard the man in his throes of death, Judson's mind began to wander to the faith of his youth. Was the dying man prepared to die? Where would he spend eternity? Was he a Christian, calm and strong in the hope of life in heaven? Or was he a sinner, shuddering in the dark brink of the lower region? Adoniram became frustrated with himself because these questions did not fit into his new deist philosophy. And what would his old college friend, Jacob Eames, think if he heard such childish thoughts? The next morning, Judson found out the man had indeed died and asked the innkeeper the name of the deceased man. The innkeeper replied, he was a brilliant young person from Rhode Island College. Ames was his name. That was Jacob, Adoniram's friend, the very one who had led him into unbelief. He was dead and was lost. It was at this point that Judson realized that he too was lost, and the prodigal son returned home and entered on a provisional basis at Andover Theological Seminary. It was here he sought God for the pardon of his soul and was saved. This conversion evaporated all his dreams of fame and honor for himself, and in its place his driving force became planning his life to please the Lord. In 1809 he became a member of the Congregational Church, and his heart started to turn toward foreign missions. Adoniram read a sermon by Dr. Claudius Buchanan entitled The Star of the East, where he described the progress of the gospel in India. Adoniram wrote, Though I do not now consider that sermon as particularly excellent, it produced a very powerful effect on my mind. For some days I was unable to attend to the studies of my class roving about the college rooms, declaiming on the subject of missions. Being the epic scholar, Judson began to read everything he could about the countries in the East. He was particularly taken with Michael Symes, an account of the embassy to the Kingdom of Ava, which told of a British officer sent to Burma. He described the land as totally pagan and in need of the gospel. Judson was entranced. Judson tried to find like-minded friends at Andover, but there were none. He later said, I found none among the students who viewed the subject as I did, and no minister in the place or neighborhood who gave me any encouragement. Finally, God brought five students to Andover from Williams College, who fully supported Judson's view of foreign missions. Without any denominational support in America, Judson wrote a letter on behalf of the group to England to request assistance in their missionary endeavor. While they waited, Judson and the others wrote a letter to the Congregational General Association, asking whether they should seek missionary support from American or European missionary societies. The General Association decided to form the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions, but told the young men to continue their studies and pray until the time came when financial support would be available. On September 19th, the General Assembly voted to appoint Judson and three others as missionary representatives to the East. 
However, in 1810, Judson had met and fell in love with Anne Hasseltine, who was just as eager as he to become a missionary. When writing to Anne's father for permission to marry, he described the prospects of a missionary's wife in bleak terms. I have now to ask whether you can consent to part with your daughter early next spring to see her no more in this world, whether you can consent to her departure and her subjugation to the hardships and sufferings of a missionary life, whether you can consent to her exposure to the dangers of the ocean, to the fatal influence of the southern climate of India, to every kind of want and distress, to degradation, insult, persecution, and perhaps a violent death. Anne's father gave his permission to marry, and they did so on February 5, 1812, seven days before setting sail for India. Remember, Adoniram's parents were Congregationalists. His father was a Congregationalist minister. Adoniram and Anne were both Congregationalists, and Adoniram had been sent out as a missionary by the Congregationalist board. Judson knew he was going to meet with and work near British Baptist missionaries while in India. Confrontation, he felt, was eventual. So while on board the ship, he decided to research the defense of his Pado baptist position. This theological belief advocates infant baptism, but after thoroughly researching the subject for the four months aboard the ship, a Adoniram came to the conclusion that the Baptists were correct and he was wrong. This decision meant he was turning his back on his family and fellow Congregationalist missionaries. Coming to this conclusion on baptism meant he would need to break ties with the Congregational Church and their financial support. Judson did not expect the disorganized American Baptists to be able to support he and Anne as missionaries. Some of his friends questioned whether the belief about baptism was worth even breaking with the Congregationalist Church, and in Adoniram's mind, it was. How could he willingly baptize an infant when the prerequisite of baptism is a profession of faith? The anguish he and Anne suffered in this decision is evident through the letter she wrote to her friend Nancy. Can you still love me? Still desire to hear from me when I tell you I've become a Baptist? We are confirmed Baptists, not because we wish to be, but because truth compelled us. We have endeavored to count the costs and be prepared for many severe trials resulting from this change of sentiment. We anticipate the loss of reputation and of the affection and esteem of many of our American friends. In writing to the American board to tell them of his theological change, Adoniram stated, My change of sentiments on the subject of baptism is considered by my missionary brethren as incompatible with my continuing as their fellow laborer in the mission, and it will, I presume, be considered by the board of commissioners as equally incompatible with my continuing as their missionary. The board will, undoubtedly, feel as unwilling to support a Baptist missionary as I feel to comply with their instructions, which particularly direct us to baptize credible believers with their households. In a letter to the Baptist leader, Reverend Dr. Bowles of Salem, Massachusetts, Adoniram stated, Within a few months, I have experienced an entire change of sentiments on the subject of baptism. My doubts concerning the correctness of my former system of belief commenced during my passage from America to this country, and after many painful trials, I settled down in the full persuasion that the immersion of a professing believer in Christ is the only Christian baptism. As a public profession of his change in denominations and commitment to his beliefs, Adoniram and Ann Judson were baptized in Calcutta by the Reverend Ward on September 6, 1812. Unable to remain in India due to tensions between the British and Americans, the Judsons traveled across the Bay of Bengal to Burma, the location of Michael Symes' book, which had moved Adoniram's heart towards missions while at Andover. But becoming a Baptist and moving to Burma were only the beginning of troubles for these missionaries. Over the next 39 years in Burma, Judson buried two wives and seven children. He was tortured and jailed for 19 months, waited six years for his first convert, constantly fought malaria, and suffered from a pulmonary disease which only allowed him to speak in a whisper. But to Judson, all of that paled in comparison to what he accomplished in that hostile and pagan land 
for the Lord. Like the biblical split between Paul and Barnabas, God used Adoniram's disassociation with the Congregationalist Church to create the influential Baptist Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in India and other foreign parts. When Adoniram Judson died on April 12, 1850, he had successfully translated the Old and New Testament into the Burmese language, created a Burmese English dictionary, which is still used today, planted 100 churches, and counted 7,000 believers. Today, all 6 million Christians in what is now Myanmar can trace their faith to the work done there by Judson. If I had not felt certain that every additional trial was ordered by infinite love and mercy, I could not have survived my accumulated sufferings.